pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I'm in a new location. I actually filmed a vlog in this little park. This is about a 10 minute walk from my apartment. And you're gonna see behind me the wonderful antique, Japanese antique store. I did a vlog there several months back and I've included a, a minute of similar vlog tour of the outdoor display of the, the antique store in the vlog collaboration video that Kendra Winchester, Leah of Hide and Seek and I have just finished. It'll be going up. Probably the next video after this Friday Reads will be that vlog, so you'll see that. But I sat on this bench, but the light was weird, so I'm kind of sitting on an angle, so you're going to see the traffic. That's Inokshura Dori. It's a pretty busy street. But when I filmed here yesterday, and that's my uh, audiovisual announcement that I have, is I bought a $20 lapel mic off Amazon and I think it works just as good as my $200 mic. Maybe it's 95% of the, uh, it works 95% as well as the really expensive one, but it's so easy to lug around. Here it is, it's, so uh, it picks up my voice really well, just like the $200 mic, but I'll do more outdoor filming because it's got this thing on it, uh, the, what do you call it? the spongy thing the, there's no almost no wind problem anymore Mel had told me that in a comment on one of my videos where I was complaining about I was looking at the wrong way when I was complaining about the wind so I need to get one of those felt whatever they are covers for my expensive mic and it will work much better outdoors too but most of the outdoor videos you've seen on my channel in the last week have been made using this mic so I'm really pleased with that Coffee time. I've had a fantastic reading week as I expected I would with having most of the week off. And another exciting event, booktube wise, was that I hit a thousand subscribers a few days ago. So I'm tickled pink about that. So there's two videos that if you haven't seen them, please go check out. One is a book giveaway. I'm giving away four books. So that is open until May 15th. Go check that out. And also I have another activity for my subscribers called Camera Flip, where I'm inviting you to submit videos to me and I will put them up on my channel. Go watch the video for that as well. And that one's up indefinitely until I get tired of posting them or maybe nobody's gonna submit any, but that's what I got going. I finished two books this week and I'm not gonna talk very much about either of them, but I'll, uh, especially the Trollope book. Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. This Can You Forgive Steve Donahue read-along. I loved it. I have nothing to add to what I said over the four weeks where I put up weekly commentaries, but so glad to read some more Trollope. I think I said in the second week's response video that he'd su supplanted George Eliot and others as my favorite 19th century novelist. Ah, by the end, I said, no, I think he's one of my favorites, but I don't think anybody's gonna displace George. Marianne Lewis anytime soon, but I know I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Had some socio-political problems with it, but that was part of the enjoyment too, was the critique. The other one is I finally finished this. I started this two and a half months ago. It's the short stories, A Guide to Being Born by Ramona Ossobel, adopting the Simon Savage approach to getting more short stories into your regular reading. Every time you finish a book, read a short story, 
and as a palate cleanser and then start a new book. So that's why it took me so long. I only did read it that way. So it took me two and a half months, but that was not a problem. I loved these stories. I didn't love every story, but I loved most of them. So it was a five-star read. I actually, this is the first time that I assigned each story a five-star rating and then did a mathematical average and it came out to 4.6 or something, or 4.5, which rounded up to a five. Five-star read. Loved it. Some of the stories were a little bit too weird for me, but most often the weirdness had a surprisingly emotionally moving component so it wasn't too weird for me. She's divided the stories into four sections, each one having either two or three stories. And the sections are birth, gestation, conception, and love. I want to think about that and kind of review the stories, thinking more about how they relate to that section heading and probably do a, a full review at some point. But if I don't ever get around to it, this was a wonderful collection of short stories. She has one other short story collection out and a novel. I believe the second short story collection is the most recent one. I can't wait to read all the rest of her stuff. And this is, kind, this is again a record that I have no bails this week either. <laughs> but last week I said I was coming close to bailing on the Everything Here is Beautiful novel by Mira T. Lee for the reasons that I explained at length last week. I haven't ever gone back to that audiobook. I still think I'm maybe going to bail, but because I haven't, I'm now saying I've gone three weeks without a bail. As uh, Janet Remembered Reed said in the comment section, who are you and what have you done with Sean the Book Maniac? <laughs> so, finished two, started five. That, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Not really. I'm out of control. I have started and now halfway completed uh, This Must Be The Place by Maggie O'Farrell. I'm doing this as a vlog collaboration with Kendra Winchester and Leah of Hide and Seek. It's just a matter of hours before our vlog collab video goes live, so watch for that. Really enjoying it, having a few small problems. I hope they're going to end up being small problems by the time I'm finished the book, but uh, loving it. Chris of Chris Bookish Cauldron on his recommended books for a book slump video. Oh, that's not the exact title. I'll put it in the show notes, of course. One of the books he recommended was Tangerine by Christine Mangan. I'd heard mixed reviews of that, but once I saw it was on audio as scribbed and I previewed it for about three minutes and really liked the audio narrator's voice, I decided, what the hell? Why don't I try it? I don't read kind of suspenseful it's almost genre fiction, suspense, and I just don't usually go there, but I, I continually try it. So don't get mad at me if I bail. I'm trying it. I'm trying to expand my horizons. So far, I'm enjoying it. I've only listened to maybe one and a half chapters or two chapters. I also started this, Soviet Milk, by the Latvian writer Nora Ekstina, translated by Margita Gailaitis. And this is from... Uh, Perrine Press, which I love their press. They put out lots of translated fiction. I haven't had good luck with them. I bailed on the only other one I've tried, but they're very beautiful books, and I'm certainly going to give them a lot more of a try. I am about 40% of the way through this. I'm doing it as a buddy read with Brita Bowler, and that's a wonderful experience in and of itself. And so we're touching base on Voxer every second day. So I not entirely sure that you're watching Eric Carl Anderson, but Brita Bowler can understand how to work Voxer. <laughs> so you're really old, much older than Brita and I. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a few small problems, small, more than I anticipated, having heard a couple glowing reviews, but no, it's the word I'm going to plagiarize from Brita is captivating. It's really, really on put downable and bleak. The atmospherics are so bleak and wonderfully drawn. I won't get into any of my problems with it because I maybe feel very different by the time I'm done, but really, this is a compulsive read for me so far. Another buddy read, on last week's Friday read when I did my little short-term TBR, I forgot to mention this. It kind of went completely out of my brain, but only for a few hours that day. So I've started another book as a buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages. And this is kind of a non-fiction book. The Book of Forgotten Authors by Christopher Fowler, 2017 book. 
I talked about it on a 10 books tag last year and bought it at around the same time. And when I saw Ange had hauled it last month, I said, we should buddy read it. So we are. And it is a book of kind of biographical sketches and essays about authors who were once really popular, who have kind of disappeared from the cultural radar and are no longer being published, bought or read. And the chapters are bite-sized. They're about four or five pages a piece. So there's about a hundred authors profiled and a few other essays, like the one essay that I've read so far was about Disney adaptations of novels, but most of them are just one author per essay and really interesting. But I'm worried that... <laughs> so, for example, I'd never heard of Charlotte Armstrong, but she was kind of a myst- she was a mystery writer and nobody reads her anymore and I think her books are mostly out of print. But her most famous one, or one of her famous books, it's already gone out of my head when it was published, maybe the 1950s or the 1960s, is called Mischief. And it's about a couple that are staying in a hotel and they lose their babysitter, but they need to go to some function. So they get a babysitter through somebody who knows somebody, through the front desk staff or whatever, and it quickly gets very psychotically suspenseful. And it's 150 pages. So Ange and I, we just have to promise to each other that we can't keep doing this, but we're going to do a two-day buddy read of this novel, Mischief, next weekend. Because it just sounds so interesting. And I don't read that genre again, and I'm always trying to kind of give myself a little push to expand my horizons. So this will be fun. And it came directly out of this book. Another guy, I don't think I'm interested in trying any of his books, but his name, his real name was Ernest Borneman, and he wrote at least some of his books under the pseudonym Cameron McCabe. He was a Jewish German guy that fled the, during the Nazi occupation and ended up in the UK and then in Canada and Lord knows where else. But he was a sexologist, a psychoanalyst, a jazz musician, a jazz critic, a novelist, uh, and about five other areas of expertise. So just one of those types and his only really famous novel but nobody reads it or talks about it now as far as I know it's out of print under the pseudonym Cameron McCabe is the face on the cutting room floor. Christopher Fowler really writes in an interesting way about different kind of pro styles and what was in vogue at various times and how things go out of vogue and I was really interested in what I'm not interested in reading mysteries but I'm still interested in reading about the lives of mystery writers and also it's, he has some very astute observations on writing style and so he compared this novel the face on the cutting room floor to the kind of mysteries that were in vogue at that time and how it was this was really almost postmodernist in the way that it approached the genre and Borneman himself described his writing because he was writing in a second language he wrote it it wasn't translated he wrote it in English as I love this quote a finger exercise on the keyboard of a new language so just for the writing alone, I might want to try that someday. But the other thing about him, in the Fowler book, he ends that little essay by saying, at 80, he killed himself over a love affair. And that was in 1995. You've got to adore him for that alone. So, very interesting. The one essay in this first chunk is called The Forgotten Disney Connection, and about all the European authors that Walt Disney adapted their novels or boulderized their novels. And it wasn't a really effective essay. He, he really skimmed over a lot of things that I thought he should have fleshed out or at least or else left out because some of it was even hard to understand. But did you know that the author of Bambi, I don't have the full name, but the surname is Salton, S-A-L-T-E-N, the guy who wrote that novel, he was also the anonymous author of an erotic novel about a Viennese prostitute. That didn't come out in the Bambi publicity. And then how about Dumbo? The story was actually created by the author Helen Aberson. Oh, breaking news. The Nobel Prize in Literature will not be awarded this year because of the sex scandal, sex abuse, sexual harassment. I haven't been following it, but some kind of sex scandal with the Nobel Committee. No prize in literature. Oh, you heard it here first? Maybe. Probably not. By the time I get this video up, it'll be all over everywhere. This Dumbo story was written by this author for a novelty toy called Roll-A-Book, which never took off. I took the time to Google that and found several articles. I haven't yet made the time to read them, but that sounded fascinating. So no, really enjoying this book, and it's a nice light read. For the most part, really well written. And we can't read every book. (laughs) 
We'll never finish reading the Forgotten Authors book if we adding intense two-day buddy reads to our <laughs> roster. What a happy problem to have. So that's going very well. And the last, oh my god, the last one. So now that I finally finished the book of short stories, I've immediately started another one, which I will read in the same way. Although I did find, because I, you know, there was a month there where I did, wasn't finishing very many books, the reading of the collection went very slowly, so I might add one day a week where I read a second story, just so it doesn't take two months. But I've started this much lauded debut collection, as far as I know. No, I don't know if it's a, a debut. But this much lauded collection from last year from Canada, All the Beloved Ghosts by Alison McLeod. It was nominated for some Canadian literary awards. I don't remember if it ever won any of them. But been hearing nothing but good. Peg, of Peg the Book Prize Addict, talked about it, and I know she read some of it at least and had good things to say about it. So I bought it. I can't remember if I bought it in Canada or wherever I got it, but I've had it for a while and finally started it. I'm just partway through the first story called The Thaw and it's really good. Kind of reminds me of a Alice Munro story. It's set in maybe the 1920s or early 1930s and it's about a family that had so much tragedy due to TB, tuberculosis, so if I'm not mistaken two sisters, two adult sisters, like still living at home but unmarried sisters, died of TB within a few years of each other and then a brother died in a fight and then the father died and so there's still several other sisters and the mother but the mother has gone insane due to grief or she's bedridden so it's a very sad story but this paragraph among many others in the opening first few pages this is about the protagonist Marjorie unmarried but adult she works Mondays and Wednesdays at the head office of Thompson's Foundry before her father died, he made it clear he would consent to a part-time position only. She did not need to work, he explained with a benign smile, and although James McLeod is now eight years gone, no one, not even Marjorie's eldest sister May, with her fierce intelligence and heavy eyebrows, has the authority to overturn his decision. So yeah, this is starting out really good. So those are the books I've started, but I've started too many. But because of the buddy reads that are on a time schedule, I will finish Soviet Milk with Brita next week sometime, early next week. We'll finish the Maggie O'Farrell early next week. Those are the only two. So those will be gone, so I think it's okay. Because <laughs> there's several books that you haven't heard me talk about for a couple of weeks that I barely touched at all last week. And in terms of TBR, I, the only one I'm going to start before next Friday, unless I have some audiobook bales and start some more audiobooks, but otherwise is one of the ones I mentioned last week, West by Karis Davies. I didn't get to it, so the next textual ebook or printed book that I finish, I will start that one, and then I will wait to finish at least one or two more before I start anything else. But I do have another buddy read next weekend, which some others coming up oh my goodness life is beautiful that is my friday reads how about you what are you up to reading wise or otherwise have a great weekend and thanks for watching